Good morning and welcome to our daily devotional from Pilgrim Congregational Church. I'm Patrick Horn and we're glad to have you along whether you are listening through Zoom or watching on Facebook or watching a later recorded version on YouTube. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have been in the book of Acts now for several weeks and <clears throat> We are looking particularly this week at Paul's speech or sermon to the Athenians uh, in ancient Greece. And this is one of the few times that Paul is <clears throat> speaking to non-believers. So in most instances uh, in the New Testament, um, in the letters, Paul's letters and in the book of Acts, he's almost always addressing uh, either Jewish followers of Christ or Gentile followers of Christ. And this is one of the few instances where he is addressing uh, non-believers. And so <clears throat> it's a very uh, powerful passage and a very important passage that tells us a lot about how uh, we should relate the gospel to those who have not heard it. And he spends a, a good bit of time talking about the nature of God. And this is the particular verses that we're going to focus on this morning are some uh, among my favorite verses in the Bible, um, because po probably because of my, my interest in philosophy, and he's clearly addressing philosophers in, in Athens. But uh, let's get right into it. The verses we're going to look at are Acts chapter 17, and I'm going to start at the end of verse 27 and then read 28 and 29. Yet he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, a representation by the art and imagination of man. Well, as I said, uh, that's one of my favorite phrases from the, uh, from the whole, whole of the Bible. In him we live and move and have our being. And the reason I love this phrase so much is that it reminds me of constantly of the nature of God. I think one of the challenges that we have um, is <clears throat> our understanding of God. We are so oriented to the world to think of <clears throat> to think of things as objects, uh, as things, and this verse helps me helps remind me that God is not a thing and it helps me re helps remind me what is meant by spirit uh, and in this case the spirit of god because <clears throat> it reminds me that we are completely dependent upon god that uh, god's spirit is perhaps more like our concept of love than our concept of uh, a person even uh, and so, because we are dependent on God emotionally and physically and spiritually, it can get a little bit um, challenging to understand or to think about what kind of <laughs> what what kind of uh, thing God is. And we have to remember that God is not a thing at all; that God is spirit. And this, uh, this verse helps, uh, helps me to do it, that in him we live and move and have our being, that we're completely and utterly dependent upon God for, um, for all things. And um, it helps uh, us remember, I believe, that uh, not only are we completely dependent upon God, but that God has to do with uh, the spirit of things. Um, not with <clears throat> not with objects, as verse 29 says, um, not uh, with gold or silver or stone, 
and then most importantly, perhaps, not a representation of the imagination of man. And this is maybe the most difficult one because um, we, we are very prone to have an imagined figure of who God is, and that's quite natural, and, uh, and um, you know, we shouldn't beat ourselves up too much for that. But we have to be careful because it is an imagined uh, idea of what God is like. And it's important that we continue to work in our relationship to God, that we are relating to God and not to this imagined thing uh, that we come up with in our heads. And I think that it's a, I think that it's a, that it's, con it takes constant work to be able to do that. And uh, this verse helps remind us of that. So I'm going to uh, close with uh, a word of prayer from uh, one of my favorite prayer books again. Soul of the universe, light of the mind of man, spirit of Jesus Christ, who dwells in all things, from whom and in whom and unto whom we are, we thank thee that thou hast so formed the world and so made the heart of man that we cannot escape thee and would not if we could. In all our restless desire, it is thee we really seek, even though we know it not. For if we have all and not thee, we have nothing, and our spirits remain still famished and athirst. Thou comes to us through every channel of impression and visit the heart in every experience. For even though we do not mark thy coming and we fail to recognize thy hand, ever and always thou find some secret way within, and the silence of the soul announces thou art there. Interpret then to us, we pray thee, the movement of the world and the motives of our hearts, so that we shall no longer search for what we have, nor seek with sin to stay desires designed to find no satisfaction till we come to thee. Shine through our blindness, break through all our delusions, strive with our rebellion, plead with our pride. Thou art our all, leave us not. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for our daily devotional from Pilgrim Congregational Church. I'm Patrick Horn. <clears throat> I hope you can join us each day and on Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time for our daily devotional. I mean, for our worship service uh, at Pilgrim Church. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.